Hi, I'm Phil Trail, and this is the six minute film which I wrote and directed, and it's called Dangle.
The idea for Dangle came when my friend and I were lying in the park, lying on our backs in the grass, looking up at the sky. And we were wondering what would happen if a rope just fell down from the sky and sort of bounced in front of our faces. Then I started thinking about the story and I thought it'd be fun if it was a light switch coming down from the sun, which would turn the sun on, on and off. What I wanted people to think when they'd watch Dangle is that what would they do if they saw a rope hanging from the sky? Would they just look at it and think that was really cool and then walk on? Or would they play with it and would they break it? Every film needs a script, even if there's no dialogue, because films are about what you see and what you hear. So I'm writing everything that I want people to see and they need to know what to look at. So here's a little bit from the original script. The man stares at the end of the string, bewildered. Then his eyes follow it up. Cut to the man's point of view, looking up at the infinite piece of string which disappears into the sky. Cut to close up, front on, with the end of the piece of string in front of the man's face. The man's eyes follow the string back down to the bottom. Then he thinks for a moment and nervously prods the string with his newspaper. The string sways from side to side. You'll notice in the actual film, I didn't use a newspaper. Um, at the time when I was writing the script, I thought it would be a good idea. But I guess when we were filming, it seemed a little bit complicated or unnecessary. I just used my finger. After the script is written, the director comes along and he reads the script and has some ideas and then thinks about where he would put the camera and how he would actually make the film. And part of this process is to make a storyboard. So he draws out all the different images in sequence so that if you watch them really quickly through one after the other, it would be like watching a film. So this is my storyboard for Dangle. In this one here, you can see this arrow. So I want the man to start here and walk to there. And there's the rope hanging down. So it shows that in that shot, he'll be walking. This, this shot here is the same as this image here looking up at the man, up his nose, and the rope goes up into the sky. The man in the film is a nice guy, I think, and he's just out for a walk on his own. He'd be quite happy to have a normal walk and not, nothing strange happen and go home afterwards and have a cup of tea. But when this rope happens, he's just inquisitive. He wants to know what it is, and so he goes and has a play. He doesn't mean to be mean it to break or want to do something nasty. But I think he doesn't think things through enough. So he thinks he's having a really good time, but he doesn't think about what everyone else is thinking in the rest of the world as the sun is going on and off. He's just happy giggling with himself. So I think he's a nice guy, but a little bit selfish. It's important that this film is set in the countryside on top of a hill so that the man is on his own. If it was set, if the rope had come down in the middle of a city, for example, then there'd be lots of people around all pointing at it and fighting over who should touch it. And I didn't want that. I wanted one person on his own. When I was making Dangle, I used a close-up when I wanted to see the expression on the man's face. So when he just pulled the rope and turned the sun off, I wanted to see the shock on his face, like, oh my, what have I done? So we were really tight and really close up on his face. Then I was thinking of when to use a mid shot. So when he's having a good time turning the light on and off, I used lots of mid shots because you could see his whole body. You could see all the silly positions he was getting himself in as he turned the light on and off. And also sometimes I wanted to use a really wide shot to show that there was this little man and this long rope on this big field and there was no one else around. When I was thinking about sound for the film, I realized there was no dialogue. So what should we hear? Should we hear any music or what? And I decided I didn't want any music. I just wanted to hear the footsteps of the person walking through the snow. and then his breaths and gasps of astonishment so that you really felt you were with him. I also wanted to use sound to help when you watch the film to be able to feel the difference between day and night. 
So in the day bits, there's bird song and it's all quite light, the sound, there's lots going on. And at night, it's completely quiet, apart from a, like an icy wind that's kind of blowing like So therefore you can feel how bad it is that the world is in complete darkness for eternity. When the rope is tumbling down from the sky, you can hear the noise it makes. And that sound helps you feel how long this rope is. It doesn't seem to stop, it keeps falling. And, and sound can really help make people imagine things better. And then right at the end, when the camera isn't moving at all and he's run off, you can hear the sounds in the city down below as everyone's trying to work out what's going on and why it's all suddenly dark. So the special effects and dangle, there's two big ones. First of all, there's the rope, which obviously we couldn't get a rope hanging down from the sky. So we had to hang it from a crane and then in the computer, they rubbed the crane out and they drew the rope up into the sky. So it looks like the rope goes into the sky. The other special effect we used in Dangle is to turn the sun on and off. If you watch really closely, it suddenly goes to night and then to day again. So that was just a button on the computer that made it look like night, but actually it was day. So sometimes special effects really help you understand the story and make the story work. In this, if we hadn't had special effects, this would be a crane holding a rope in a field and it would always be daytime. So it wouldn't be a very good story. When people watch Dangle, I wanted them to laugh at the idea of having a light switch hanging from the sky. And then I wanted them to be a bit cross with the guy for breaking the rope and plunging the world into darkness. And I wanted them to think that maybe next time when they go and look at nature, they should just be a bit more respectful of it.